All right, going to do a somewhat in-depth and thorough refutation of the heresy of open theism. Now, what is open theism? Well, open theism is the heresy that claims that God does not know absolutely everything about the future as a strict line of certainty, but rather he knows everything that can be known, but he doesn't know the future for sure. He just makes good guesses or he knows that as like some kind of web of possibility, but not as a strict certainty, a uh, line of certainty, basically. Uh, this is a heresy. It's denying the all-knowing nature of God, how God is all-knowing, God is all, you know, he has all knowledge. And I'm going to show you that God does in fact know the future as a strict line of certainty. First of all, let's go to the fact that Jesus Christ knew that Judas Iscariot was going to betray him before anyone else did. He knew that for a strict line of certainty. John chapter 6 verses 70 to 71. Jesus answered them, Have I not chosen you twelve, and one of you is a devil? He spake of Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon, for he it was that should betray him, being one of the twelve. John chapter 13, verse 21 to 27. When Jesus had, had thus said, He was troubled in spirit, and testified and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, that one of you shall betray me. Then the disciples looked one on another, doubting whom, of whom he spake. Now there was le leaning on Jesus' bosom one of the disciples whom Jesus loved. Uh, Simon Peter therefore beckoned, him, beckoned to him that he should ask also who it should be of whom he spake. And then lying on Jesus' breast, saith unto him, Lord, who is it? Jesus answered and said, He, he it is whom I shall give the sop uh, when I have dipped it. And when he and when he had dipped the sop, he gave it to Judas Iscariot, the son of Simon. After and after that sop, Satan entered into him. Then said Jesus unto him, That thou doest, do it quickly. Okay, Jesus Christ knew that Judas Iscariot was going to betray him. He knew that Satan was going to enter into him. And when it does happen, Jesus just says to him, Do it quickly. He knew what was going to happen. He knew that for a strict line of certainty. Also, Jesus Christ knew that Peter was going to betray him and deny him three times. John chapter 13, verses 36 to 38. Simon Peter said unto him, Lord, whither goest thou? And Jesus answered him, Whither I go, thou canst not follow me, but thou shalt follow me afterwards. Peter said unto him, Lord, why can I not follow thee now? I will lay down my life for thy sake. Jesus answered him, Wilt thou lay down thy life for my sake? Verily, verily, I say unto thee, the clock shall not crow till thou hast denied the, the denied me thrice. So he knew also for a strict line of certainty that Peter was going to deny him three times. And guess what happened? Now the Bible clearly teaches that God is all-knowing. Because we've already seen how Jesus Christ knew what Judas Iscariot was going to do, and he knew what Peter was going to do. But it teaches clearly that God is all-knowing. Turn to Romans chapter 11, verse 33 to 34. O depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments, and his ways past finding out, who hath known the mind of the Lord, or who hath been his counselor? Psalms 40 verse 5 Many, O Lord my God, are my are thy wonderful works, which thou hast done, and thy thoughts, which are us to us word, they cannot be reckoned in order unto thee. Uh, if I would declare and speak of them, they are more than can be numbered. Psalms 139, verses 4 to 6. For there is not a word in my tongue, but lo, O Lord, thou knowest it altogether. Thou hast beset me behind and before, and laid thine hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is high, I cannot attain unto it. Psalms 147, verse 5. Great is our Lord, and of great power, his understanding is infinite. God is all-knowing. His understanding is infinite. He knows everything. Now God declares his counsel with a strict line of certainty. Turn to Isaiah chapter 44, verses 4 to 6. 
Sorry, I do apologize. It was Isaiah chapter 44, verses 6 to 8. I went to verse 4 to 8. Thus saith the Lord, the King of Israel, and his Redeemer, the Lord of hosts, I am the first, and I am the last, and beside me there is no God. And who, as I shall call, and declare, declare it, and shall declare it, and set it in order for me, since I have appointed the ancient people, and the things that are among, and shall, that are coming, and shall come, let them show unto them. Fear ye not, neither be afraid. Uh, I have not, ha, have not I told thee from the time, and have declared it. Ye are even my witness. Is there a God beside me? Yea, there is no God. I know not any. So he's declaring it as a strict line of certainty. It will happen. It shall happen. He told him, told him it, them it from the beginning. His witness from the beginning. Isaiah chapter 45, verses 21-23. Tell me, and bring them near, yea, let them take counsel together. Who hath declared from this from ancient time? Who hath told it from that time? Have not I the Lord, There is no there, and there is no God else beside me? I am I a just God and a Savior, there is none beside me. Look to me, and be saved. Look unto me and be saved all all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is none else. I have I have sworn by myself the word has gone out of my mouth in righteousness and shall not return, that unto me every knee shall bow and every tongue shall swear. So you see again the certainty, you know, kind of wording used. It shall happen. You know, he's sworn it by the word of his mouth. You know? And of course the thing of every tongue shall swear and every, you know, knee shall bow, that is obviously, you know, repeated in Philippians uh, chapter 2 verses 6 to 11 you can read that chapter on your own but it's repeated there Philippians 2 verse 10 is the specific verse but he's declaring it as a strict line of certainty Isaiah chapter 46 verses 9 to 11 Remember the former things of old, for I am God, and there is none else. I am God, and there is none like me, declaring the end from the beginning, and from ancient times the things that are not yet done, saying, My counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel is from a, from a far country. Yea, I have spoken it. I will bring it to pass. I have proposed it. I will also, I will also do it. You see again the strict line of certainty it will happen declaring the end from the beginning not just it might just happen I'm, I it's possibly gonna happen no it will happen Isaiah chapter 48 verses 3 to 7 I have declared the former things from the beginning and they went forth out of my mouth and I showed them I did them suddenly and they came to pass because I knew that thou art uh, obstinate and thy neck is an iron uh, sinew and thy brown brass. I have declared, I have even from the from the beginning declared it to thee. Before it came to pass, I showed it thee, uh, lest thou should say, My idol hath done them, and my graven image, and my molten image hath commanded them. Uh, thou hast heard, see all this, uh, and will ye not ye declare it? I have showed thee new things from this time, even hidden things, which thou didst not know them. They are created now, uh, and not from the beginning, even before the day when thou heardest them not, uh, lest thou shouldest say, Behold, I know them. Okay? You see, God does know the future. He's declaring the end from the beginning. He's saying, This will happen. You know, that you're my witness. And he's obviously, you know, saying that uh, it will come to pass. Not it might come to pass, it will come to pass. It says, And they came to pass in verse 3. So God knows the future as a strict line of certainty. It's not this thing where God, he makes good guesses. That is blasphemy. I would say it's borderline blasphemy to say that God does not know the future. Open theism is a heresy. Okay, I don't just throw, I, I try not to throw on the, the word heresy just very lightly. But saying that God does not know the future, that is heresy and borderline blasphemy. It's a very wicked doctrine. God knows the future. He knows it as a strict line of certainty. He knew what Judas was going to do. He knew what Peter was going to do. And he declares the end from the beginning. And I've said this before, I'm not good at reading on a computer, but you can see clearly in those verses, if you're looking in them yourself, that God knows the future. He knows the end from the beginning. He declares it, and it will come to pass. That's also how you know that the scripture is inspired. You don't need some, some, uh, some cult or some pope to tell you that the Bible is inspired. God tells you how you know if his word is inspired, because what he says will come to pass. So, 
I wanted to show you guys that. Open theism is a false doctrine, it's a heresy, and it is borderline blasphemy. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye.